Welcome to Kingsport Christmas, or Christmas in Kingsport. Nice. Care of Oscar Rios, adapted by my good self, of course. So, we've all got children, or clothes, or both. Some of us, more than one child, I mean, rather than cold. That would be difficult. We've got a delicious two and a half hours before the first of us probably falls asleep. Maybe <laughs> three hours before the second of us falls asleep. But we've got ways that we can handle some of that. Tactics. Things we can apply. So, fingers crossed, we'll be okay. Mm. It is, of course, three o'clock in the afternoon, as many of you are aware. The 24th of December, 1924, Christmas Eve. The station in Kingsport, the police station in Kingsport. The precinct itself is probably not that big. In fact, I'm not even sure you could really call it a precinct. It's a head station. There might be subsidiary stations elsewhere. Uh, so the three of you have been on duty all day. You pulled the short straws and you were called in early. The afternoon's been slow, as indeed you'd hoped it might be. Mm. There was a little bit of eggnog that got passed around. Some of you possibly didn't drink it because you knew that it would have whiskey in. Others of you probably had a fair few shots of it because it had whiskey in. Because of the early start, you would have got up about 5.30, been at the station by 6.00. You found yourself drifting and fell asleep. <laughs> it is for the sake of our theatrical journey the case that you are not aware that each of you is having the same dream. In the dream, you see a group of children playing on the hillside, some kids, if I could use that term. The hillside is Central Hill, and a strange but fascinating woman is watching them and laughing. She's wearing a, a flapper, a very fashionable flapper's dress. She's very beautiful. The afternoon sledding goes on. The kids, or you, or you are the kids now. You're not sure in that way that dreams can lack certainty. Uh, but you head in for plum tarts and tea. And the flapper starts telling you stories about her recent travels. And there's a strange blackened shape of clothes that barks at you every now and then. Uh. This shape has a cane and a face that's like a mask that moves around the parts of the pile of clothes. It's not fixed in one place. It also has, uh, this figure also has a little rat that wears dungarees and has the face of a newspaper cartoon. It hops up and down on her and fusses at her, the, this woman in rags. And this thing has a high female voice, but the creature itself seems to be male. So you're sent to bed, eventually, and there you're visited in this sumptuous bedroom by this white-skinned woman, the same woman who was watching on the hill, and she's wearing this evening dress that uh, very daring. It plunges to the waist. She's still very beautiful, but she now seems to remind you of a cross between a man and a woman. You can't quite place the effect of it. Uh, and she keeps saying her name, but you can never remember it each time she says it. And she takes you on a journey through the Kingsport streets, which are very quiet and glittering with winter frost. And you can see down to the docks, there are various other white figures moving towards the docks. And there's a golden jetty there. And you can see from behind the moon, a flying ship comes down towards this jetty. Meanwhile, over on the hill itself, opposite, you see green flames of torches moving in a spiral up the hill while these white figures uh, are heading down towards the docks. On the other side, green flames carried in torchlight seem to be carried up towards the church there on the hill. And then you all think you see, you see some worms crawling there on the other side, but then you, you think it can't possibly be the case. Uh, this distance, they'd have to be massive, the size of a car, these worms. And they're, but they're just there turning and churning in the earth. And just when you think you're going to become truly afraid, in the same way that a child becomes very afraid, 
this white galleon arrives, the ship, and the woman in white with you points to it, her beautiful hand stretching long into the dark. And this ship arrives at the golden jet, and you feel yourselves being swept towards this ship. And at that point, you, you hear a peal of bells, and then someone's shouting, and you wake up and you realise you've dozed off at the desk. It's Christmas Eve. There's only a few other people in the station, and you can hear Chief Henderson saying, Moran, get in here. Baines, Eisner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Sure thing, Chief. Coming. I follow silently, like a spider. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, don't sit down, don't sit down. We haven't got enough time for that. Ah, uh, the last thing we need is some problem at the end of the day. You know the Belvedere house? Yeah. Uh, up on the hill? Oh, hmm? the old Belvedere house. I... Yeah, that's the one, Baines. Trust you to know it and say it like that. I've admired it many times on my late night architectural tours. Yeah, 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 sure. Kingsport. Sure you have. Shut up, Baines. Listen. All right. Moran, have another Rick note. <laughs> Uh, who made these? Now listen, you made them have another one. No, no, I said who made these? Uh, the, uh, oh, must have been Bannon. The degenerate Scandinavians. <laughs> they got a hell of a kick. Must have been Bannon on the desk. That explains it. Yeah. Uh, so, listen, Mr. Wynn Stanley has mentioned that there's a problem at the Belvedere place. Nobody's been seen coming in, going out, going in or out for a couple of days. I need you to go over with this. Mm. And he picks out a bottle of eggnog, which you're pretty sure is untampered. He puts it in your hands, Moran. I need you to go over, uh, make a show of it. You know, go with these two good-looking idiots. (laughs) We had a beat cop asked to go by, who was it, Um, Franklin went by. And he said uh, nobody answered the door. Cars are outside. Mm. They confirmed that there was a uh, a smell, a weird smell. Said, said it was real sweet, like gingerbread, oh. but not. I mean, that's not so weird this time of year. But Franklin's a good kid. Not so weird with Frank. Anyway, anyway, probably smelling himself. Did he even wind down the window? Would Mister Win Stanley called it in? Said there's been some odd singing, some strange noises. Sounds like Christmas. Excuse me, Chief, but. Do we make a habit on uh, knocking on doors on Christmas Eve of houses because we haven't seen people coming in and out and there's people singing in a funny smell? And someone's making gingerbread on the Yuletide. I need Mrs. Belvedere, Eleanor Belvedere, to keep liking the chief of police in this town. Uh, You understand me, Moran? Understood. You don't need me to tell you Mrs. Belvedere has been here longer than you've been pissing. No, I hear you, Chief. Uh, I tell you, if I said it once, uh, say it again. You, you've you've heard me say it before, all three of you. If it wasn't for old grumpy frown lines like that woman, old Belvedere, we'd end up sliding into the sea like those folk up in Innsmouth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck those guys. Hey, hey, aim for the spittoon. Hey, what sorry, are you? sorry, sorry. Who brought you up? Oh, hey, Bainsy, he's a real gentleman. He didn't miss on the floor. I've been meaning to make a, of those eggnogs. I've been meaning to make an architectural and possible genealogical tour of Innsmouth at some point in the coming years. I had an aunt. <laughs> Innsmouth way. Well, well, listen. Look, we all call her Aunt Nora. You give her my best to her. Hmm? Tell her, tell her, we don't go scaring folks on Christmas Eve by closing all your shutters and not appearing. Yeah. Oh, and the maid hasn't been seen for a couple of days either. That's what Win Stanley said. Win Stanley's wife clearly spending most of her time stuck to the goddamn window panes, as far as I can see. Better things to do with your Christmas, right? I mean, uh, we'd all like to be down on the docks, I shouldn't imagine. Not I imagine oh, no, the maid no. may have been sent home for the Christmas period. That's good thinking. Bane's always thinking. You so see, possibly... I swear you could learn a thing or two from Bane's. He's always got his head screwed on. Uh, t- too much right. thinking, some might say. <laughs> You're damn right, but around here. Give me some of that goddamn it. One might suspect a woman of her advanced years might have slipped in the kitchen while fermenting her gingerbread creations. Well, I would have thought she got the maid making that. I mean, how old is she? 70, 80? It's impossible But if to the say. maid has been sent away, then she may have attempted it herself. A foolish thing to do. 
Yeah. So we're heading up to this house. We need to see if she slipped down the stairs in a pool of eggnog. She's got visitors there. We a couple of cars. Yeah. Well, Franklin did. Sure. No one's been seen in or out for two days. It's probably a waste of time. Franklin hey. gave it a good hard knock. I've got to clear this off my desk. Well, this you understand? Yeah. The sooner we get up there, the sooner we can get off and get home. Morale, so. you're absolutely right. But let me be 100% serious about this. I've got cards with Charles on Boxing Day. So, so you will know Charles. When he says Charles, he means the mayor. Because he always only ever refers to him by his first name, Charles. Only ever Charles. I've got cards with Charles. If there's a problem with Belvedere, there's a problem for Charles. You get me? We're going to be a mess. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't fuck this up. Um, I, uh, uh, from my position, stood by the door, um, up against the wall. Um, you are the furthest back. Watching this guy. Mm-hmm. This, this, this concern for Mrs. Belvedere. How do I detect anything else about it? Is it, is it, is it just, you know, the politics of the police station and worrying about some old lady, or is there any sort of real uh, alarm behind what he's saying or in his demeanour? Can I do a psychology roll? I think. Give me a psychology roll. As I see, uh, as I see, Baines suddenly put put on his thinking face, studying the chief. Mm-hmm. I just sort of turn to uh, turn to Lefty and give him a wink, as if like, here he goes again. I I failed that by six points, fifty six on a on a fifty. So I'm going to push the roll. I. Uh, I stride forwards with my gangly legs, <laughs> straight up into his face, and I, I, I fix him inches away, almost nose to nose, and I say, we're going to find out what's wrong with Mrs. Belvedere. You have my word. He'll have your badge. <laughs> and I, I push the roll. <laughs> A 77. A a, a big old fail. So you're you're pretty sure from his reaction, which is one of alarm, it's actually actually worth it. Failing is worth it in a sense because you see that there is something else that's bothering him. The the, the statement that he made, you heard it again. He said it several times about Nora Belvedere, as she's affectionately known. She's something of a character in society, Catholic, traditional a staunch supporter of temperance, on the surface at least, certainly. If it wasn't for grumpy fraulines like Nora Belvedere, we'd be slipping into the sea like those folks up in Innsmouth. And it rings in your ears, but possibly the reason why he says it so often is because he really believes it. But he, but he looks in horror, and, and the shouting starts... What the hell do you think you're playing at, Baines? I've already... You've been drinking too much eggnog. As soon as he starts Get the hell out of my office. I I turn on my heel and stride out. Moran, I don't want any problems. I'll I'll throw this goddamn eggnog at the last man standing in this office. Get out of here. I don't want to look at you disgusting people. Moran, if you're not at mass on Sunday... I will. There will be hell to pay. You understand? I'll take that shillelagh off. Uh, as it's a, not official. You're in charge, Moran. Don't fuck this up. As I leave, I say over my shoulder, when have you ever not seen me at mass, chief? See you at mass. Do you kiss your mother with that mouth? Get the hell out of my office. I want results. Or I'll get your badges. I want pictures oh, of Spider-Man God. on my office. On my office. In my office. By yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Eisner, what? Eisner, you, you, get back in here. Close it. No, hey. leave the door open. Don't close yeah. it. Leave the door open. I want the others to hear this, Eisner. You better not screw this up. Uh, you know me, too. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Do you understand me? I know what you're saying. Yeah. I know what you're saying. One word. One word. Get out of here. Yeah. You're a good kid. Tell that brains to calm it down with all that deductive yeah. reasoning bullshit of his. I'll write, I'll write in Shakespeare here. Don't worry. You are affectionately known as Lefty. Uh, I, I regret that I inform you of that later than I should. Um, because of the pronounced limp you have of your left leg. Of course, that was caused by the accident, um, the the tragic sinking of the merchant navy vessel that you were on at the time when you were serving, uh, and you luckily escaped with your life. Um, How much the others know about 
the details of that is entirely up to you, but I think it's not something that you particularly talk about very often. Uh, but yes, that's why they called you Lefty, uh, and I did not tell you that. <laughs> Sorry. You didn't, but uh, now that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Moran is affectionately known as Peacock. Got it. It is your middle name. Ah, OK, it's not my actual... It's not one of my surnames. Shakespeare, Peacock, and Lefty. The Apocalypse Players present Christmas in Kingsport by Oscar Rios Heavily adapted by Joseph Chance Starring Dan Wheeler as Detective Inspector Eamon Peacock Moran The weather reminds me of what me dad used to say about the weather back in the old country Dominic Allen as Detective Constable Oliver Shakespeare Baines Oh, of course. Newton's first law. The law of inertia. Danan McAleer as Detective Constable Matthew Lefty Eisner. Uh, here, I'm, I might grab my shotgun, just in case we might eat well this Christmas after all. And Joseph Chance as your festive keeper of the arcane law. What, the three of you are walking out... Uh, you've got a choice of patrol car. Moran has his own vehicle. Uh. It, it's a drive to this place from the station. You're down in town, and the house commands a view up in the fancy north quarter. Well, uh, I think we should take the uh, the station car, don't you? I mean, after all, the point is we're meant to be making the the precinct look as if we're uh, more interested. Well, making a good impression, it's... deliver the eggnog. There's a lot of sense in that, boys, but as soon as we check out the house, I'd like to be back home to my family, so I might take my own car. Why don't we just take two? Perfect. Mm. You're, you're the boss, Moran. I will have to get home to mother. Well. Yeah, well. Can maybe take the tram. You can always, uh... <laughs> yeah, quite. Lefty can take the patrol right, car back and you can take take the tram. I dislike the tram intensely. Oh, all the better. Having to bump shoulders with the common herd. <laughs> I pretend not to hear that. Deeply unpleasant experience. Yeah. This democratization of transport will lead us all into the gutter. Yeah, listen, Baines, uh, you know, cooler with that shit, right? <laughs> We're just going to check up on some old woman. We're making sure she's having a lovely Christmas with her guests and uh, making sure the chief's not forgotten about here. So, uh, yeah. Chill. We'll be back in time, I'm sure. So you leave the station through the the official garage. It was a sequence of um, sets of steps that takes you outside. And you get this beautiful view of downtown Kingsport. The heavy snows. The sun is beginning its downwards trajectory. Over into the land is casting an orange glow, an orange-red light onto the sea. Could, um, if you have dream law, could you give me a dream law roll? Ooh. Seems very unlikely that I would have that. Let's have a little check. Uh, or indeed, or I will take dream law or lucid dreaming as a skill. Either of those two skills. Yeah, have a look. Oh, yeah, I'll give it a roll. I failed. Yep. Just rolling up now. I failed. Yep. Come on. Oh, yeah. Straight off the bat. A nine on my ten. Ooh. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. So the light shimmering off the water brings to mind that golden jetty mm. that you saw in the dream. And the golden light, you see that it's there in the right place. Yeah. Where you saw it in that dream that you were having when you fell asleep at the desk. Yeah. And uh, could you could you gain D six Dream Law for me? Oh uh, yeah, I would love to. I'm sure that won't harm me in any way. May I um, ask? Can I also check while I'm here? Mm -hmm. um, sorry, uh, I'm just going to ask what Dom's doing with his hot water bottle on his face. Just keep it, trying trying to decongest uh, myself. It's oh, okay. uh, uh, it's a warm compress. I'll breathe. He's loosening the sinus passages, uh, att attempting to increase the lucid dreaming. And it feels amazing as well. It feels great. And could I ask the keeper of the arcane law, mm -hmm. um, without giving away too much about my backstory, basically how I well, there's a there's a certain lady in the past in my life. Um, how would I pronounce her name? 
just because I've only seen it written down. Yeah, that's a good point. Is that a fair question? If, you, if you're not sure, I'm happy to make a stab at it. It's always a fair question. I, I was going to pronounce it... <laughs> I would say, Utaxapixwa. 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 Ah, OK, excellent. Um, well, for the time being, I mean, I won't, I won't mention her to the others. But well, I no, but now's a good time. I just wanted to ask, basically, is this a similar dream to ones I've had previously? Uh, no, no. Uh, this is a, Excellent. a market change from the norm. Mm. If one can describe a norm, describing and dreams. yet it reminds me of her. So I, uh, I do place my hand into my uh, my breast pocket and just uh, rub the item I have in there, mm. just as a sort of a, a momentary thing, and then I, uh, I carry on. Uh, breast pocket is um, is know- nice. Can I just confirm, breast pocket not round the neck? It's in your clothes. Yeah, now. breast okay, pocket. Nice. I think. Uh, um, yeah. It's a beautiful view still to you, Moran. Oh. And you, you drink it in. Oh, I, I like weather, you know. It's been a nice place to live when it doesn't rain. I mean, it's snow-covered now. The snow is really thick and picture-perfect. And it's, uh, and it's lying scattered across the rooftops, piles by the side of the road. You don't have to do a drive check, don't worry. <laughs> I like... That's why I like this part of the country. The weather... Reminds me of what me dad used to say about the weather back in the old country. Mm. Never knew it myself, but feel yeah. certain attachment to me roots when confronted with wild weather. Yeah, I know what you mean. I uh, remember the Black Forest. Oh, uh, did I, I speak out world. loud again? Uh, <laughs> you probably didn't know I was just... Uh, uh, no, I no, probably no, you... did. You you go ahead and block the improv. That's fine. That's what you Irish do. <laughs> <laughs> I but, thought I was in a different car. But masterfully. Uh, oh right, yeah, you probably are actually. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is now. Yeah. <laughs> On that point, equipment wise, is anyone taking anything with them that they feel? I uh, I I think I uh, <laughs> looking at my gear and possessions. I feel like I, uh, there's nothing there I wouldn't take with me. I think I'd, anything large, I'd probably sling, sling into the back of the boot, in the trunk of the car. You do have a bag. Mm. Um, you never know. There is a flashlight in your in your um, in your car, Moran. I don't think I put it on your person. I, I, I have, have one on my person. I'll definitely, I, I'll definitely put that in. Uh, I'll put that but, in my. I've got a long coat, so I've got plenty of pockets. Everything. Yeah. I, I'm. I, I fill my pockets. I'm sort of. I'm kind of like Inspector Gadget. I think. Yeah. Um, I've got everything in a hold all in the trunk, except the smaller items about my person. But uh, you never know. Even with a simple thing like this, it might just be the O'Learys, and obviously we'll uh, <laughs> we'll probably just uh, turn a blind eye, and so will they. But you never know. I have a suede leather police satchel. Quite right too. <laughs> Which I carry all of my effects in. Can you get a doctor to look at that? Or is that... I expected moleskin. <laughs> Embossed with your monograph, right? Exactly so. Except for my pencils, which I am currently clutching, one between each finger on my right hand, and they're rammed right into my mouth, and I chew them. I chew... I chew the paint <laughs> off of them. It falls from my lips in tiny flakes as they crunch between my teeth. Can I just check who's in which car? <laughs> you, you two are together. It's me and Baines are together. Watching these horrors. Yeah, you and Baines. So I, uh, and I, I look over and see this. Eisner, I don't think there's been any discussion as to who is driving. You're driving. I, I guess so. That's all right. I think I look over and see this and just go, uh, yeah, <laughs> Kingsport Herald model policeman in 1924, my ass. <laughs> and then I uh, carry on driving. I forgot to tell you that, actually, Baines. There, there, there was... A photograph taken uh, of you that your mother arranged. You mean a portrait? For the Kingsport Herald. Oh, yeah. 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 A a photographic portrait. The modern policeman with your charming golden rimmed uh, Mm. circular spectacles making you look really rather debonair. Was it not when we, she and I dressed as policemen for um, uh, (laughs) the the issue of, uh, what's it called in Arrested Development? (laughs) Reader's Wives. (laughs) Was it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Re- I, you don't, I don't know Arrested know, Development? Arrested Development. Oh, Buster and, uh, no. Buster and his mother in... Oh, what's it called? I barely know my own name, Dom. 
<laughs> yeah, I've seen Arrested Development. Boy, but mother, remember them, but is it uh, mother boy, mother boy magazine? Yeah. <laughs> Front cover of Mother Boy magazine. Mother boy, that, that I is think it's Mother Boy. Is it Mother Boy? I have to check. Anyway, uh, so as I drive on, I say, uh, "There's lead in those. You want to be careful, you fool! You crazy. It's graphite. There's lead wow. in the in the in the in the paint on our in our houses." <laughs> There's lead in our hats. <laughs> oh, so I'm the fool. You're still the one wearing the hat. <laughs> that is true. You don't need to do a drive check. Assuming you just take it easy. Yeah, there's no reason to turn up burningly, blazingly early. It's a ten minutes drive. Well, time on a Tokyo drift. Time on a tradition of uh, playing uh, uh, the apocalypse players playing Irishman. I'm definitely going to do a few donuts in the car park. <laughs> <run away>. uh, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> it's got to be done. <laughs> yeah. In which case, I will. I will. Uh, yeah. Be careful, Eisner. He's going to crash into us. Oh, Christ. I've just, I imagine he's got there slightly before us just to do those donuts. That <laughs> was a hard success on my drive roll. So Ooh, I think I do oh. three in a row, and then and then. Handbrake and then pull away. <laughs> Propel yourself. We arrived to the, the side of him ruining the lawn. Moran, I, I missed a skill off your list. Oh. Could you add in consume alcohol as an actual yeah. skill? Yeah. <laughs> Damn right. Thank you. Would we put that on art and craft? Possibly, yes. Or science. I think for that, for that is uh, it, 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 that, is, that is simultaneously <laughs> not the most racist and accurate thing. <laughs> <in this. laughs> the sorry. most? No, it's, At the same time. no, no, no. <laughs> most accurate. In this episode, um, it is the, yeah the most. I've already gone on about the Scandinavians <laughs> and people on the trams. So what, how much? What, what are you going to give me in drink alcohol? Uh, yeah, that is a good point. Um, it's just twenty something like that. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'd say forty-eight. Oh. Forty-eight percent. Oh right, forty-eight. Okay. Yeah, like a good whiskey. If right? these, that's fine. A, Great. That's, that's a strong, strong. It's just like a booze, like the booze. The whiskey's like water, proof. you know. Yeah, forty-eight percent proof. Oh, yeah, if so. we get through this and haven't had to roll consistently on all these excess, ex, 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 uh, extraneous skills, I'm going to be livid. Uh, Living. No, I agree. Very I've good. got I'm some sure points on this on really, really fruity skills. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, 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 I've gone mad with you boys. And that, when that reminds me, I, I should give Baines and Moran, if you see a dead body, that's no problem for you. You've, right. you're, you're experienced. You've seen dead bodies before. Cool. Okay, so after masterful donutting in the, <laughs> yeah. in the background by Moran, we... You progress your way up to the fancy north quarter of Kingsport and you're climbing the hill. Uh, so this is the hill directly opposite Central Hill. This wonderful view of children sledding down the side of the hill and the last of the light. It's about quarter past three, I suppose, when you get there. Are you going to pull up in the driveway or are you going to stop? You can see, you can see the house from the... From the from the driveway, it commands quite a prospect of the town itself. Well, I'm just a passenger, so I'll go with you, Moran, first. I think I'd like to pull up. Actually, yeah, I think I'd like to pull up. Yep. Um, so you, the house is beautifully decorated for Christmas. No, yeah, no, I will. I will drive up the driveway. I don't want to leave my car on the road. Yeah, I'll pull all the way Which up. Which goes half the house. So you can see this really lovely house. It's imposing. It has this tower, a central tower. Uh, it's quite a Victorian affair. It's not massive, but it is beautifully made with an Art Deco... Uh, Art Deco renovations have been added to it. You, you'd never say that it was fashionable. I suspect for Baines, it is extremely attractive. Oh, now here's the... Here's the old East Coast style that we, we could all aspire to. <laughs> it has wonderful... Slate roofing, uh, and it's had electric lights rigged up around it for Christmas. And the few trees that aren't entirely covered in snow have lights on. There's lights on the drive, therefore, and all of it gives it this really lovely atmospheric quality of uh, truly festive Christmas feeling. Mm. Mm. Feel like uh, Hansel and Gretel. 
Is he, uh, is he parked up in the front? Uh, he should be, yeah. Oh, Moran. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you can see me getting out and just <clears throat> patting down my pockets. Mm. Looks like I'm patting down a, a lot of different pockets yeah. with various different things. Not a surprise. And, um... Right, yeah. let's go. Um, get out of the car. Hey, uh, Moran, what's the plan? We we go up to the door, knock, see if she's in. Well, sounds like uh, knocking on the door has been done before, but no harm in trying again. Exactly. Am I right in saying that? Uh, so there's there's two cars that are not ours. On yes, the two cars. Oh yeah, two cars. So I immediately, as soon as I'm at the car, I go straight over to them with my notebook and pencil, and get my magnifying glass out, and I start. <laughs> I get down, I crouch down my my slender but tall frame, almost bent double, almost bent over myself uh, to examine the treads and the underside of the car. Ooh, uh, yes, that, well, that reminds me. I need to add 20 to your spot hidden, Baines. Me? Yeah, because you were on 45. Five. It should be 65. Five. Yeah. Great. Uh, well, <laughs> I'd like to see... Uh, if I can determine, well, if I can see anything unusual, but specifically I'm looking to see if I can work out how long the cars have been here, judging by the mm-hmm. snow and mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the the tyre treads and, and, and that sort of thing. If you can give me that spot hidden roll, and meanwhile, the other two, I mean, obviously you, you clock this starting to happen, and this is, you know, this is his yeah. MO. He's doing stuff. Are you going to put your hat back on, Beans, or are you... Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Are we we so, are we in uniforms? Or are we plain clothes? Kind of. Baines and Eisner right. both in uniforms. Uh, I think I'm I'm Detective Constable. I'm plain clothes. Plain clothes, but Moran like, is definitely but plain clothes. I, I think, having said that, I think I could be not more obviously a cop if I oh, was, if yeah. I tried. Hundred <laughs> percent cop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so true. It's like um, yeah, yeah yeah. I think yeah. Well, I've ro- I've rolled a, a forty-five on my. Seat. Very good. But obviously that's taking some time, and in that time, uh, the other two, uh, physically, are you going to be doing anything? I think I, uh, I wander up to Moran and I say, okay. hey, look at Shakespeare over here. He's trying to see if, uh, I don't know what he's trying to see. <laughs> I mean, I'll have, I'll have uh, clocked the cars, obviously, but unless they're of any interest, I might jot down the licence plate. if there's One's quite one's average. Plate. Three. Yeah. That's quite average. Yeah. The other well, one's... Three. Think about jotting the license plates down, but you're, you're taken really more by the other one. The fact is, uh, okay. an expensive, beautiful car, mm. really nicely waxed, and then you know, they're both giving the impression that they've been there for a bit of snow. Yeah. There's a bit of snow on them. Someone's earning. Uh, Baines gets that for free. He's going for the detail extras. As he mentions Baines looking at the cars, I I just say, uh, well, I think maybe. He's likely to spook him anyway, so mm. best we leave him by the cars. But that was yeah. terrible. <laughs> best we leave him by the cars. <laughs> um, Kerts. And, uh, yeah. it's, it's Boston and Irish. And I say, Kerts. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I say, the ass of me peels. Say, Good work, Baines. <laughs> Keep it up. And, uh, and then sort of just sort of drag Eisner away up the steps to the front yeah, door yeah. thinking that Will maybe not will be the and he can just so I'm just double checking you taking everything with you Eisner um, sling bag and everything yeah. uh, no I think I'm I'm leaving my shotgun in the trunk I don't think there's any need for that yet it's like you've never played this game yeah, it's like I'm trying to play a realistic <laughs> person <Yeah. laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so Moran oh, yeah, fair, fair. Moran can I just um can I get a, a luck roll? Yeah. Uh, that is a, a regular success. Great, yeah. You look down, and, and yeah, you do have the eggnog in your hand. For a minute there, you thought you left it on the seat. That's been happening quite a lot recently. You just feel a bit, like, distracted. Mm. And, like, sometimes you're an autopilot. You think about your kids, and you think about how tired they make you feel. <laughs> and you think about how much you love, even though... Mm. God damn it, Rowan is so nervous. If Grania could be a cop, she'd be amazing. And you find yourself thinking about that, and then you snap out of it. And and you take the steps up. Baines, you're on the you're on the back wheel 
of the really flashy car, which is the back right wheel of the really flashy car that is closest to the house, when you see a wild animal track in the snow, which is quite close up to it, close up to the car. When you say wild animal? Uh, yeah, you get the impression it's big. It's not like a... Yeah, it's not, it's not like a dog or a cat or a rabbit. It, uh, it looks like a... Could you give me a... Um, deductive reasoning check or a natural world with a bonus? Uh, let's see. Oh, no, let's go deductive. Surely I'm getting mountain lions this close. Yeah, that's a hard... I'll spend a point of luck and make it a hard success. Okay, so um, that is a deer but there's something off about it. Oh, that's somehow much worse than it being yeah. a bear for some... A reindeer. <laughs> uh, it does occur to you... Caribou. It does occur to you that it could be caribou or reindeer, but that would be impossible in this part of the United States. Uh, and you think that would be impossible, and there's something impossible about this. Yeah, You've I, got your magnet. Well, I want to... Last. I want, go on. So I will give you a bonus roll for your physics. Physics? Okay. I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can follow the tracks and see well, if they I lead mean, down from let's, the roof. You've got the one at the moment. <laughs> this you is can mental. follow the tracks any second now. Meanwhile, technically, Eisner, okay, so you haven't had any... Um, Eisner, could you give me a spot hidden? I'd love to, Because yeah. Moran was a bit distracted. But he's on duty, he's got the eggnog, and his fancy eggnog, on the cheek. That's literally says, a 55 on my 55 spot hidden. Awesome. How, how, how is Baines's physics? A hard success. That was a, a, a 12 on a, on a <gasps> 31. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. You, you get down real low. Uh, and the other two of you notice that he's doing something weird down by the back of the car there. I mean, it looks odd, but because he's quite tall and ungainly, it's really noticeable. Uh, uh, and you hear a strain of music coming from a gramophone, possibly from the other house, which is, you know, only 600 metres away on the other side. Across these swanky gardens in between big stretches of snow covered lawn. And, uh, Eisner, you, you see some indentation that looks like, some indentations that look like track marks reading, leading around the right hand side, which is the balcony side at the front of the house. There's a sweeping balcony. Yeah. There's the main central stairwell up to the, to the big doors. It looks like what looks like a beautiful parlour room window. There's a sweeping dining room window, or maybe a second parlour. Yeah. And you see a couple of tracks running round, just in the snow there. Yeah. Uh, how, how good was it? Oh, it was a 55. Yeah, yeah. So, so Baines, you're looking at this and you're thinking, what is wrong about this? And you start to put your fingers in the snow like this, sort of straight down. And I mutter to myself, as if of imitating course, Newton's yeah, first law. The law of inertia. Yeah. yeah. And it's about the way the weight is going in. It's not like a deer spreading out. You start to look at the tracks, you start to follow them, thinking, this is this is bipedal. Could you roll sanity for me? Because you are 100% convinced that this is a bipedal step. A <laughs> bipedal step. Oh, fuck that. Ooh. Mr. Tamnus. Or the thing from the ritual. Fucking, Fucking hell. hell. Krampus. It's Demuda. It's fucking Pan's Labyrinth. Uh, have you read the book of the ritual? It's much worse than the film. No, you recommend it. No. Well, that's a success. Well done. Narrow. You keep your cool. No sanity loss. But it is unsettling. You know, when you're looking at this, and is it going to change whether you're going to follow these tracks? Uh, yes, I'm going to follow them more vehemently. So you... Fuck the house. You, you've made that decision. <laughs> Eisner, what are you going to do about those tracks? Are you going to mention them to Moran? Uh, to the I think, uh... I don't know. Uh, we're, we're up by the door, right? You are heading towards the door. Um, yeah, a couple of steps away. I kind of feel like, uh... My instinct is he's going to knock on the door. There'll be no answer for a while. I mean, they look I like don't know. quite big animal tracks. Do yeah. you have any natural? I, well, I, I do. I also got a track, which is uh, something maybe of a throwback from my uh, previous relationship. And uh, I was thinking my instinct would be immediately track, thinking about what I was taught, um, just to see if I can tell, well, what sort of animal it is. But uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's go for track yeah. instead. 
If that's yeah, if that works. Hmm. Uh, Twenty-eight on uh, my track is thirty-five. Lovely. So you're pretty sure that this is a large deer. Yeah. Something, there's something off about the tracks. You can't quite pinpoint what that is. Something about the way they're they're not falling the way you'd expect. But does it, it look like? Uh, well, one thing I wanted to ask is: Does it look like it was led, or like walking, or was it running? That's all. No. Could I tell that? Uh, it looks like it might have jumped down off the roof, or Jesus maybe Christ, or maybe on the roof from uh, there. But that would seem impossible. That's, well, maybe not impossible, but certainly improbable. I, unless it was being chased and it panicked and made a huge leap of faith. Uh, it's strange anyway. So, Eisner, I think you, uh, in that moment, you have a, you have a half-life encounter, which has occasionally happened to you after the events of your rescue, after the events of your miraculous survival where you recall elements of the world between the worlds, as the Native Americans would call it. Um, Well, not Native Americans, perhaps the South Sea Islanders would call it. Um, And you become faintly aware of a lowering darkness behind some of the clouds above this house, It's just for a flash as you're turning around uh, and you shake it off because, of course, you know, you can't let that sort of stuff in. Mm. If if the chief ever found out, there'd be an inquiry as to whether you were fit for service uh, and it's something you've you've never been willing to talk to the other men about because it would mark you out as a freak, you're pretty sure. Uh, You've never been... You've never been given much quarter when it comes to... uh, such things. You've never known the men on the force to be soft about such things. Uh, and sometimes you wonder secretly, I think, to yourself whether it gives you an edge. A couple of times in cases, it has seemed to point towards a clue and you begin to become more confident that there is something very strange about this house. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. <laughs> so, yeah, Moran... You know, I think you've caught Eisner looking down at the tracks, down at the snow that goes around to the right of the house, past this beautiful balustraded balcony area at the front. And I think it's that moment for you, Moran, where you take stock of everything that is before you. You've got your two junior officers, technically, although, you know, you do respect them both as very capable constables in their own rights, but you've got the guy who you probably trust a bit more, though he's, you know, he keeps himself to himself, and he he doesn't necessarily, by which I mean Eisner, you know he's not on the take, you know he's not he's not doing what Henderson always asks of him, uh, and you like Eisner, instinctively, and you trust him in that sense. Uh, he's looking at a set of tracks just off away from you but then you've got Shakespeare down there on his hands and knees doing some kind of crazy deep investigation of you know scientific methods that he bangs on about and you feel isolated in that moment and I think it brings very clearly to the forefront that conflict between your family home life and the intensity of your work and I think maybe we get an insight into Eamon Moran. Christmas. Christmas always makes me think of me ma. Used to insist we went to midnight mass, singing those carols, even though a bunch of us were tone deaf. She always used to say, the Welsh could sing, but the Irish could drink. And what would stand you better, long in life, in a hard life? A singing voice. Or a stomach for drink. And I touch St. Christopher around my neck. Rub the embossed face of it. St. Christopher. Travellers. Patron saint of travellers. I always thought it was a bit of a joke. 
the dual meaning, you know. I've never been a believer, but something about the rituals ground you, make you feel the earth beneath your feet, make you feel some somehow in touch with the real world when strange things happen like that light I saw around that graveyard that night thinking of the rituals is the thing that keeps you keeps your feet firmly on the ground And I knock hard on the door. Yeah, and I think I I, I leave him to it because as much as I... He's a very different sort of policeman to me. Um, he's His methods, although they frustrate me, have, have, have worked for us in the past. So I think I just sort of... As much as, like, all my instincts are to tell himself to, like... Tell him to pull himself together, and you know, good, good old fashioned, honest police work. Knocking on doors is what we should be doing, and that's what I'm, I'm literally <laughs> doing right now. I think. Well, if I pretend not to have noticed him, he might stumble across something that proves useful. My pride won't let me admit that actually, he's pretty good at this shit. Uh, so you're knocking away on the door. Yeah. There is no answer. It becomes clear. Um, there's glass. There's that sort of diamond-coloured inlaid glass into the lovely wooden door, which you can see through into the foyer, but it's all... It's it's not bottle glass, but it's sort of misted glass, so you can't make out... Yeah. T- you can tantalise the aspects of what might be an Art Deco interior and a stairwell. Mm, beautiful. Um, I'd like to do two things. Mm. I would like to see if I can get anything of that smell that the chief was talking about because that was weird the way he described it was very odd like i feel like if he meant there's a smell of like death in there he just would have said it but it felt like that was what he was sort of talking around so i'd like to do that and i'd also like to have a listen at the door so um smell wise do you do get a faint scent of cinnamon and uh cinders i think There is a sort of gingery quality to the burnt cinders. Almost like biscuits Mm. have burnt. It's very sweet. But it's trace, Mm. and it's not that strong. You can imagine it might have been Sounds like Smells like someone's burnt the cakes. Mm. Who was that king of England? Eisner, do you remember? uh, The one who burnt the cakes. Alfred? Oh, Albert. yeah, yeah, the one who, uh, the, the old woman was asking him, look after the cakes, and uh, he fucked them up. Something like that. And then she was like, how can you control the country if you can't control a cake? I can't remember the story, but something like that. So could all three of you roll your listening check? Yeah. For different reasons for Baines. <laughs> oh, that's a... F- that's a that's a fail, but Just I'm going to push fail. it. My hand. Um, as he's as he's talking about the uh, um, the how can you control a kingdom if you uh, if you can't burn the cakes? <laughs> I just I just say uh, I give him a gentle shove in the chest and say, um, "Shut up, will you?" Jesus Christ! And um, and give him a shove back and leaning close to the door. And I and I pass with a, re- a regular success. Could you... No, no, there was a pass. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, do what you want. No, no. It's your game. That would be mean. <laughs> that would be mean. It was a pass. Uh, I think, Eisner, in that moment, you go... For a moment, you, you thought he was going to go for the thing in your breast pocket. Yeah, yeah. And then you realise, no. God. It was totally... It was just a coincidental. Accidental. You, you did nearly to a senior officer yeah. go, fuck off. But you caught yourself at the last second going, well, it's him, kind of joshing around. Yeah. But also, he goes quiet. Baines, did you uh, 
pass your listen check? No. Yeah, yeah? So? I'm tempted to push it, but I can't think of a way I would... Basically, you can hear them talking, but you can't hear what they're talking about. And you probably don't care that much at this particular point because you've decided to follow these tracks. This could be an entirely new genus of caribou. (laughs) So you are pretty sure that something came from around the back of the house. You can see the track leading off from there, uh, which is... And then I chuckle to myself. I say that out loud to myself. Maybe it's an entirely new genus of caribou. And then I chuckle to myself and and say... (laughs) <laughs> or the Jersey Devil. <laughs> As the word Jersey Devil echo across the snow, <laughs> M- Moran, you hear the words Jersey Devil, uh-huh. and you realise that's what Baines has just said, and then it goes quiet. And then, then Moran, you can hear what sounds like a ship's bell, just faintly ringing. Ding, ding. That, that classic ship spell. You're too far away from the coast up here on the hill. Well, you're close to the coast in Kingsport, but you're too far away from the docks. Yeah, I was going to ask. Baines, so you can follow the tracks from the car down towards a, a little thicket, which is where they seem toward, to lead towards, or you can follow from whence they came, which would take you up the left-hand side of the house, past the, sta- the steps on the right, but on the parlour window side of the house. I'm going to follow where it went. Yep. Yeah. So I head to the thicket. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're heading to the thicket. Search the thicket. Oh, I, th- I think there is. I think there is a leg back there, actually. Moran, Moran, and Eisner, you're sort of, you're sort of on equal territory. Well, I tell you what, Moran, I think you also think you can hear the faint sway of the ocean waves with that. Ding, ding. It's it's an unsettling sound. I mean, unsettling enough to... Not an unsettling enough to do a sanity roll, it's just... Mm. And does it sound like... Does it sound like it's coming from within the house? Mm-hmm. Or just is it just uh, a... C- could it be a record? It, it could be a record player. I think... Yeah, I think I assume exactly that, that it's someone listening to a, an old... Um, like a, a play on a gramophone record or something like that. Um, you know what these... Uh, Fancy folks are like with their dramatizations of yeah. occurrences of seat like the tempest yeah. and Lady Wind like that. Like, uh, um, I, I don't listen to much. Eisner, what are you going to do about the tracks uh, while he's uh, listening at the door? Yeah. Are you going to stick with him? Oh well, while he's listening at the door, yeah, it seems like they what they maybe came down off the roof and then they head off down that way. I think I'm not going to follow them, but I I might draw his attention to them and just say, uh, hey, look at that. We got any mountain goats up in this area? I mean, mountain goats the size of a mountain lion. Uh, Never seen anything like that before. Do you want to look at the tracks, Moran? Or are you going to look at something else? At a glance, I mean, I'm not going to look too carefully. At a glance, can I see anything particularly odd about them? Um, or, Or is it for me, like... I, I, do you know what? I'm going to roll my track roll. Is that is that fair to see whether it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, so I, I, I failed. Um, so I, I'm going to... If it's all right, I'm going to say that they don't... I don't infer anything particularly interesting about these tracks. There could be anything. There could be a big dog or whatever. Absolutely. It's not really my ballpark. So I think I ignore them and I say... Um, uh, Never mind that. We don't want to be here all night, so... Uh, the best detective on the force. Work, work around. <laughs> Never mind that. Find the back yeah. door. That's good. That's good police. Oh, hello. That's good police right there. <laughs> to the, deliver the eggnog through the back door. <laughs> yeah. I'll take... Uh, I'll go around the, the right side, anti-clockwise, and you go around the other and we'll see if we can meet back at yeah. the back of the house. There must be a back door, trade trades entrance or something. Yeah. You got the eggnog, right? Wouldn't want to turn up at the back door without eggnog. Hey, I got the eggnog, but why don't you take take a take a little snifter of this? And I take um my little. I've got a little hit flask of whiskey as well, and I mm. just to sort of keep him on side. I give him a little swig of the good stuff. Ooh, that uh, huh? That Irish black bush. Ah, oh, wow. Yeah, that's got a certain kick to it. Thanks, Moran. Uh, here, I'm, I might grab my shotgun, just in case this uh, these tracks... It looked like a big one to me. You never know. 
Uh, we might eat well this Christmas after all. I know it's a secondary purpose, but uh, I'll grab that from the trunk and I'll, I'll meet you around the back. Well, suit yourself, but we don't want to spook anyone who oh, might really. be in here. Okay, I'll... So keep yeah. it, you know... I tuck keep it inside it me hat. <laughs> no, me, my tuck coat. <laughs> so I, I want to jog slightly back to the car and just get my shotgun out of the, the trunk. I mean, obviously... And I will go round. Clockwise. The sling bag does hide it, because it is sawn off. Yeah. Uh, well, in that case, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll have it in the sling bag, and then and I'll, because I'll follow his instructions. Because of the nature of your different, where Baines has got a coat, you've got this sort of thick le- leather jacket. Uh, it's police issue. It's effectively a, a leather jack armor. Yeah, and and slinging a sling bag with your cap on. You look legitimately like a traffic cop in that sense, but yeah. So you're going to catch up with Moran, but Moran, meanwhile, is going to make his way round the back. Have I understood that correctly? Yeah. So I'm looking looking at the the plan of the house, and you're doing that without checking in on Baines. Yeah. I mean, he's. Uh, it looks like he's wandered off into a bush. I'm, uh, I'm not that bothered <laughs> about Baines. I've got to be honest. Um, <laughs> I don't want to get into a philosophical debate with him. It feels like that's what will happen. So, yeah. looking at the plan of the house, it it looks to me like if I was to bear right, there would be a long sort of glass, like a glass conservatory, am I right? Like gla- big glass windows all the way. It's actually open. Yeah? It's, a, it's open and it's got beautiful, kind of um, beautifully draped canvas covers... Fern- uh, canvas covered furniture on it's clearly used as an open balcony in, in winter everything is ah like a ground on. like a sort of veranda uh, it's it's an open is balcony bal- it's a porch basically but it stretches all the way around the side of the house can i walk can i walk along yeah, yeah. It so i can walk along that yeah you can go on go on up and in as it were in that sense um so that's that's what i do at- there are definitely no tracks up there fine that's what i do and as i work around i'm just taking a really good look in every window I go past. So you're making your way round to what you think might be a door at the back, the back entrance, and Eisner's only going to lose sight of you for a few seconds, if at all. Meanwhile, Baines, he's Mm. making his way down following these tracks, and and as you make your way, it slopes down towards this quite dense thicket, uh, uh, rhododendrons and other low, well-kept bushes that that expand and keep low to the ground. They, I mean, they're a good five feet tall, six feet tall, so it's, it's proper mm. growth. Snow-covered, of course. You realise there's a second layer of, of snow has masked some of the footprints as you get close to the foliage itself. There, there were footprints here. Human feet, you mean? Size 12 feet, human feet. In addition, it's not a transformation, but they, they were older footprints. You can, you can see in this lower aspect of the snow that's been revealed close to the trees, uh, and they go in. And you know those kind of old rhododendron bushes that have quite web-like growth, extensive root systems? It's quite dark in there. It's, it's still good light. There's three thirty in the afternoon. Well, here's my question. I don't know if this is a deductive reasoning role, but would it be fair to say that it, it, you you might come to the conclusion that the human person was being pursued by these these hooves? Temporarily, that doesn't make sense. But, of course, it is logical to go to that conclusion, isn't it? This person went there at some stage, and then more snow fell, and then this weird... The time difference is significant. Uh, So so you're going to give me your deductive reasoning on that, are you? You Give me your deductive reasoning. Or an intelligence check, your choice. I'll I'll give you a bonus die for deductive reasoning. No, rolled the same thing twice. 89 on a 42. Yeah, something's just not making sense. You can't quite... You're disappointed. I'm going to push the roll mm, by sticking mm. my head into the rhododendron bush and seeing if the tracks continue, if that gives me any insight (laughs) into what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> 45 on a 42. <laughs> Close, but no cigar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cruel. That's really cruel. You, you really do feel like you're very close to cracking something here. It's, it's an exciting moment of detective work for you. And you feel this invigoration in the same way that you were invigorated by thrusting your face up into Chief Anderson's visog. You, you thrust your head into this near darkness <laughs> and you look around uh, and you see the body. <gasps> but you don't understand how it's got there. And that really frustrates you. And um, and and you've inadvertently realised that you're leaning on this rhododendron branch. Just then, it snaps, and you fall forwards, and your face goes into the body, crotch. Uh, and we'll come back to you. <laughs> it's 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 wearing black uniform, by the way. A dark uniform, and and I think because of that, you were so close. You do think it was the chauffeur. But your face is now in the dead chauffeur's crotch. Eyes <laughs> uh, now. You can see Moran moving around the other side of the house. Yeah. You're coming back. You've got the bag. You've got the... Could you give me another spot hidden? Because I think uh, now you're becoming more attuned to the fact... Mm, did, did I miss something earlier? 23, back up the house 23 on a 55, so uh, hide. Hard success. Um, hard. I think I'd give both things. Yeah, yeah. You clock that. You, you the, there might be some tracks wide off to the left of the house. Okay. Your instinct is th- that might be a circumnavigation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They look similar. You're just c- doing the full look around, and you look up for the first time properly, and you see a- an undeniable. I want to say a hand mark on the window, still a handprint. Uh, uh, on the window of the tower, this is, above. Uh, uh, but you're pretty sure that looks like dried blood. Shit. It's a white window, still. Shit. And it's got this hand uh, mark or print. You'd need to be closer to be 100% yeah, yeah, yeah. certain, but your instincts tell Immediately, you. Immediately. That I, looks like You know, someone's been like pushed blood. out the window, someone's been injured, someone's been forced out. Uh... Someone's something's happened here. You, well, either that or someone's yeah. injured themselves Down. on the way up and left that mark. But uh, either print. way, uh, it's not good. Yeah. So I think I, I hurry around the building to uh, to meet uh, Moran on the other side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just to check, we're on the same page. I I told I suggested yeah. that we went yeah. around opposite directions. So I'm, right. I'm going to hurry around my side. I'm, I'm still going to be keeping an eye Which out. is yeah. that left side, because you've gone right. Yeah, right. yeah. Exactly. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, so, so you're hung there. Uh, so which brings us back to Moran. There's a back door. Uh, could you give me an idea roll? Yeah. Uh, what my intelligence? Gosh, right. this... He's very good. He's good at everything. Um, yeah. Which is nice. But it's not necessarily going to help well, me in the long run. Uh, but that is a success yeah. on my idea roll. <laughs> uh, so, I was hoping that he might not be that intelligent, and maybe he might avoid I, some. I most randomly roll your stats. All of your, <laughs> True. All of your stats. Random. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Skills. I did boost here and there, but nearly everyone has experience packages. Obviously, in fact, everyone does have an experience package of different sorts. Uh, so. So I'll give him bonuses. I, I also think... Because yeah. sometimes I feel like the skills mm. are never quite balanced. You need to have certain languages. I mean, poor old Baines. He, he's basically got a college education, and yet he didn't have any sciences or anything <laughs> like that. I mean, come on, man. I mean, like, you'd have science. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that is a, that is a success yeah, so on my idea roll. You, there's two things you get from this. One, this place looks like... It has never woken up. All the shutters are down, all the curtains are drawn, except that one at the front of the house, the glass there. But that probably never has curtains on it because it is stained glass, misted, and and it's the welcoming porch. It's this beautiful double front door kind of thing. But everything else, shuttered, curtains, the place, it's like the place never woke up. 
and no one's been seen entering or leaving for two days. And you're pretty sure that this door in front of you must be a door either into a kitchen or a back parlour. So looking at my map... Just the way, yeah. Um, uh, it's the... back right door. It's quite small. It's the back right, like, before I even get to the back of the house, right? It's like... Yeah. Still on the side, in a way. To, to go around the back of the house, you don't have to okay. jump over the off the porch and go around, which would be yeah, easy yeah. to do. Well, so I... I, uh... I, I I I hold fire at this door. I probably listen at this door, but I just wait, expecting that uh, that lefty will make his way around and meet me here. Because I'm assuming that this is the back door. Give me another listen. Place list. where he'll be waiting. Give me another listen. It's an assumption and a bonus this time because you've listened before. Oh, th- thanks. And you're a little much. further away from. Well, that's a regular success with yeah. my uh, first die. Is it worth seeing if I get an extreme success or? Definitely. Yeah. Wow, well, it was worth it. That's an extreme success. That's a zero six. And we listen. So you hear the bell again, but much closer this time. Great. And you're absolutely sure you can hear the sound of the ocean. It's got to be that record. And it's got to be, got to be close. It has to be. Close by. It's playing some kind of soothing... Maybe someone's recorded the sea. <laughs> like through, well, ambient. Some sort of like ambient sea sounds to yeah, try and get a child to sleep. Tiku and Grania wouldn't sleep. She's such I remember a, Grania, yeah. she would not sleep. I used to sit up going... <laughs> like the waves. <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, just shut up. Shut, and and oh, no. occasionally... <laughs> dong, <laughs> dong, I don't... I, don't know why I threw the bell in there, but that's almost certainly what... Yep. But these rich folk, they don't need to shush themselves. They got records to play the yeah. shush. They don't need to shush. You give me a constitution check. God, hey, God, God. To pour the whiskey yeah. into the milk. And... That's, a, that's a fail. Failed my constitution. <laughs> you need a drink. Well, I've got one right here. So I'm going to have... I'm not going to open that eggnog. I've got my little um, hip flask of... Just thinking about this. Whiskey... Still, need a drink. Um, which is yeah, it's is the is the cheap bottle in the car? The cheap bottle of whiskey. Ah, I missed that. Cooking whiskey yes, in the car. It is yeah. <laughs> the cooking whiskey's in the car, and it's a it's a, like a little it's a hip flask, it's a relatively mm. generous hip flask. Mm. Hideous concept. Um, I think it's probably let's see well, how much you get in a hip flask. Two fifty mil, yeah. maybe. Yeah, your hip flask. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Probably more like 150 for most people, but yours is one of those long ones. Yeah, yeah. It slides in. (laughs) All the way down the trans Inside pocket. Inside pocket, keep warm next to the, yeah. Gives a nice balance to the 38. Yeah. The handle of the 38 just leans on it. You've got to make sure when I draw them quick enough, I put the right one in my mouth. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. That's Irish roulette. Love it. Yeah. So, uh, you, are you going to take a sifter? Yeah. nerves. Yeah. And as you open it, you hear Oh, oh, I think there's someone outside. Mickey Mouse? It might have been. What what was did I hear the what can I have those words again? Oh, oh, I think there's someone outside. Ho ho, I think there's someone outside. Disney Mansion. (laughs) Goofy's killed the chauffeur out here. Um And that's coming from in. I mean, does it sound? That oh, was inside. Fuck? It came from inside. Ding, ding. The ship of spell. The the sound of the waves. Oh, oh! I think there's somebody outside. So, okay, right. Yeah, but Baines, you you've just tumbled forward onto this guy. So I'm, uh, I'm for free action rather than a sanity roll. You're gonna get a, get you're gonna get up out of that, or you can s- try and stay in it and and work out what it is. But that will be a sanity roll. It's one thing to yeah. find a dead body; it's another thing to fall into one, especially at the crotch. So I'm happy to get up, uh, but I, what I want to do once I'm up, hmm. I want to take his shoe off and uh, compare it to the footprint that I have detected in the snow, assuming it's the same size and shape. As you do that, and you confirm it is a size 12, it even says 12 on the bottom, yeah. helpfully, as you're putting it off, y- you see there's something horribly wrong about the top half of his body. Oh, no. It seems... There's something horribly wrong about this man. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to have been concertinaed onto his mm. waist. 
So his whole body has been folded back onto his waist, but his arms have been sort of... They're sort of akimbo. And he looks like he might be Greek. <laughs> Horror. Um, <laughs> Horror. <laughs> Horror. Uh, I, I don't think uh, I can cut that. That's too good. <laughs> and too horrible. I mean, for listeners who aren't familiar with Lovecraft, why the fuck are you listening? <laughs> um, <laughs> and if you are familiar with Lovecraft, that's who I'm basing it on. He's racist. Well, he was in uh, his early years. And, uh, his, and his middle years and his early, early late years. Uh, <laughs> and then the, the light. And, then, on. And, and right at the end, Well, lest we forget, lest we forget, <laughs> lest we forget, he did vote Roosevelt and he became a socialist towards the end of his life, which wasn't that old. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, a few years away from uh, myself. And the moral of this story is don't be racist because otherwise you die young. And, and the other man. moral is Very we miserable. should give everyone a chance to reform themselves and see the error of their ways. Because, exactly. But how many? Right. But how many chances? But how many chances, Eisner? Well, one, unless they earn the second. Damn straight. You got that Damn straight. Well, Lovecraft didn't even get one, really, did he? So, anyway, um, and with the shoe. And I, I take it I need a sanity roll for this, do I? I'm afraid to say that the concertina thing, the shoe thing is fine. Yeah. Do you need to glean something else about the shoe before the sanity roll? Uh, no, uh, but my intention is to walk very calmly in my sort of elegant... Uh, el- not elegant. My ungainly long strides across the snow. Um, uh, I won't shout... My intention, I mean, we'll see how the sanity roll goes, but my intention is not to shout and simply to walk up to Moran and say, Inspector, the chauffeur has been concertinaed in the thicket. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, I failed my sanity roll, though. Yeah, yeah. So (laughs) So I probably just crapped myself. It is only one sanity loss, because you've seen bodies before, but it's just you've never seen one in this kind of weird... (laughs) punched, broken, crunched way. And I think the thing that really grounds you is something isn't right. It's it's helped you with it not being too grotesque, is that you can't find Ugh. blood anywhere. The legs and pelvis and actually the stomach, they're all still there. But down to the high waist, the, the high, mm. high 1920s yeah. waist... Everything has been crushed down and drained. But there is an involuntary action. He's like a beer can. Which I think you say out loud, yeah. but... But yeah, 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 your intention was to walk across. So, and so you've all, already found that you're analysing all of this as you're walking across and you're ruining the track <laughs> yes. you wanted to preserve, obviously. And you're... Basically, you find yourself at the front door realising you can't see them, the others, you haven't heard anything from them, you don't know where they are, and you sort of come to yourself in that moment. You're at the front door. And I knock on the door with the shoe. (laughs) Brilliant. (laughs) Resounding sort of... Yeah, you're going to listen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, give us a listen check. Oh! I'm going to spend four luck and make that a success. You hear the bell of a ship. Uh yeah. And but, uh, and and you can hear the sound of waves. Eisner, you're yeah. heading around this, you're following these tracks. You're not ruining the tracks. You Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're around the back and you're checking up regularly. You can't see any other blood smears or anything like that around the back. No. Okay. Okay. And you're moving I think just before I pass the the last corner, I do actually Take the uh, the wooden statue out of my pocket and put it back around my neck. <laughs> I think I was testing yeah, myself yeah. to see, you know, distance and all that, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, I do that, and I take a swig of my schnapps, mm. and then I uh, I round the corner to where uh, Moran said he'd be, and he isn't there. Ah, fuck. In which case, but there's I, a good uh, chance that's because I he's been delayed by seeing something. Oh yeah, absolutely. S- he's probably just been delayed, but things are getting weird. I'm I'm loading my revolver, and I'm putting it back in the holster, but I'm loading it. Um, as you making sure as it's you loaded, rather put it back in. You hear this <laughs> on the, on the door or the front. There's something like something heavy hitting the door. Yeah, Moran, Moran, is that you? Uh, Beans. I'm, I'm going to do a listen roll, if that's fair, to see whether I hear that. I think it's fair to say you do. It's not that wide a distance. You don't have to roll for that. 
you'd heard yeah. the weird high pitched voice. Maybe you lost a few seconds going, "What the heck is that? What's going on?" Yeah. You, but you steadied yourself with the snifter earlier, and you hear the door being pounded. I get my thirty eight in my hand, and instead of responding to Eisner, but by means of letting him know where I am, I say, uh, I just sort of say loudly, not I don't shout, but I say calmly but loudly through the door, is everything all right in there? Fine round here. Who's that banging? Let's, let's meet back up. Here, Shakespeare, where are you? I'm at the front door. <laughs> <laughs> this has got very Keystone Cops all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm at the front door with, a, with, a, with the shoe of the late chauffeur. What the fuck? Something terrible has happened to him, and I don't think it was an accident. As soon as I hear that. I'm at the back door with a revolver of an early departure. Uh, I assume Moran is closer to me. He sounds closer to me. And yeah, 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 he's very close. I'll round the corner towards him first. You circumnavigate, and you can see him. He's there, ready, poised. Yeah. And, well, well, Baines, what are you doing? And, Moran, are you trying the door, or...? Uh, not yet. I will wait till Eisner reaches me, assuming he's going to get here. Back up, yeah, you can get back up. Yeah. You can climb up now. Yeah, yeah. This is the quickest route, Eisner, is just to climb through yeah, there. I'll do that. The balustrade. Baines, what are you going to do? Uh, well, I've alerted them to where I am, so I, I crouch down at the letterbox, assuming they have a letterbox, unless they have, like, a yes, American-style you know, post box thing at the front of the drive. So if they've got a letterbox, I'll, I'll open it, and I'll call through and say, Mrs. Belvedere, answer the door immediately. This is the police. You are under arrest on suspicion of murder. <laughs> I would like to take issue, actually, with something on my character sheet since we're on this subject. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that you say I've got another language and it's Gaelic. Can I assume you mean Irish? Oh, sorry. Irish Gaelic, yeah. Offensive. It's, is it, well, I mean, I'm only Irish saying... Gaelic. Is he not? I've got a friend whose father is a professor of Irish and if anyone ever refers to the Irish language as Gaelic, she takes serious issue because well, so it's, a, it's a language family. It, he refers to it as Irish. So he would refer to it as Irish. I think, Irish. yeah, I mean, I know people like that, having learned Irish myself, but I think most people refer to it as Irish Gaelic. That's generally accepted. I think there are a few stronger opinion people out there. Well, when I get Broner on the podcast, I mean, you can fight it out. The, I feel schooled. Well, there we go. I mean, the guy who taught me... Schooled in a good way, educated, I feel educated. Almost had his thumb cut off by a paramilitary as a seven-year-old, <laughs> and he calls it Irish Gaelic. OK. So, uh, you know. I think as long as Irish is but, in there somewhere. Well, the Irish, the Irish, yeah, yeah. the Irish famously agree on things a lot, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> so surprising. They, you know what I'm trying to say. They're yeah, gonna yeah, have yeah, a feud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah, gonna yeah. have a feud about something as irrelevant as a language group or a religion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> strange. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 uh, I'm being I'm being pernickety. Um, you know. Welcome to the Apocalypse Players St. Patrick's Day special. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. No, wait for that one. That's gonna be really special. Oh, yeah. Happy Easter, everyone. Of course. Uh, of course. Yeah. Oh, really saucy. <laughs> um, uh, 